Hello friends, my name is Kevin Kutto and in this video I am going to explain a very important concept in Six Sigma analysis as well as statistical analysis a process capability. In this video we are going to learn what is the importance of calculating process capability, the process capability index such as CP and CPK, why this is so important document as a PPAP submission which is production part approval process and why as a design engineers we should learn uh, to calculate the CP and CPK. So we are going to find all these answers in this uh, video. So if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel please do subscribe. Uh, if you like the content please do share and like the video. So let's begin. Let's begin by answering the basic question. What is design specification? So design specifications are two extreme limits okay they are upper specification limit and lower specification limit between these two all the parts can vary and still functionally acceptable that means we are allowing the part to vary within these two limits if you have not understood the definition don't worry we'll see the example so we have the block here and the width of the block is 12 plus minus 2 so upper specification limit is 12 plus 2 which is 14 and lower specification limit is 12 minus 2 which is 10. If we see normal distribution curve then we can find it. Here. Horizontal line represents the span of tolerance. Uh, this vertical line here at the left represents lower specification limit which is 10 mm which we calculated. Similarly, right side vertical uh, line represents upper specification limit 14, which also we calculated here. Obviously, the center is mean, which is 12 mm. And then we have two other lines, which represents plus minus 3 sigma span, which is total 6 sigma span. It represents almost 99.73% of the population. Now let's understand what is process capability. Now process capability compares actual measurement data from the quality control processes to the design specification limits by using capability indices like CP and CPK. So if you have not understood the definition, don't worry, we'll see with the example. Lower specification limit is 10, upper specification limit is 14 and the mean is 12. Now we are going to prepare the drawing of this and going to give to the supplier. Now it is supplier's responsibility to meet these specifications and he will use different processes in order to manufacture this part. Now it is very important to understand the capability of that process in order to manufacture this part within these specification limits in production run. That is very important. So we are not going to do only for smaller sample, but we are going to ensure that this part is produced with these specifications in longer run with the production run. And that's why process capability study is done. In order to do process capability, we, have, we are going to collect a lot of data, right? So we are going to measure a lot of parts and we are going to use those part measurements in order to calculate process capability. So graphically again it will be easier to understand so we have seen this already but there are two more graphs which i have shown here one is green one which shows high process capability why because first of all its mean is matching and the variation is so low that it is away from your upper specification limit and lower specification limit what does it mean it means that there are there is very very less chance that part will be going beyond these lower specification and upper specification limits and rejected right so we are on safer side on other hand there is a red normal distribution curve which represents low process capability why because there are many parts which are lying here which are beyond lower specification and upper specification limit the spread of this curve is more that means tolerance variation is more and that's why there are a lot of parts which are going beyond these specification limits and which is not desirable. It, it is a representation of low process capability. Now let's understand why actual dimensions vary. Uh, in dream world, 
uh, it is desirable to achieve the mean as well as reduce the spread but in reality it is not going to happen because there is a lot of variation which is happening all around us in processes so what are these variations tool changes setup changes worker change inspector change material measuring instrument machine part handling and packaging environment change so there are a lot of causes of variations and these variations will be induced into dimensional variations as well that's why it's very important that whenever we are checking process capability we have to capture all these variations when we are taking those measurements because just imagine if you collect all data in only one shift okay are you going to capture all the variations no because you you may not capture variations uh, due to worker change or inspector change or material change so you have to make a plan in such a way that the sample measurements will be taken from each shift you have to also make a plan whether you want to take the dimensions after every setup okay so that kind of plan is known as sampling plan so sampling plan plays very important and critical role so sampling plan defines when and where the dimension should be measured okay it will define okay you have to measure the dimension after every setup or the first part in every shift or last part in every shift okay so as per that inspector is going to collect all the data and that's why it will capture all kind of variations which might happen in the process and then will ensure that our process is stable enough to manufacture all the parts as per specifications in longer term now let's go into actual calculation so if you see this table these are the actual measurements from the field okay so i have five groups here this group should be as more as possible i have taken five just because i want to show you calculation part okay but in reality there should be more than 10 15 the more the groups are it will give better results because any statistical process or calculation works better when sample size is bigger for calculation purpose we have just taken five uh, groups in each group we are going to take five samples okay so uh, you can see i have rounded up all the things okay just to make it simple for calculation so we have 13 12 uh, 10 12 13 these are the dimensions actual dimensions then we have range of the group okay so what is the range of the group we have to find the uh, largest dimension and the smallest dimension so what is the largest dimension here 13 right and what is the smallest dimension in this group 10 so 13 minus 10 which is equal to 3 this is the range of this group similarly we have to find the range of each group similarly i am calculating mean of each group so you can see here if i calculate add all these and divide them by 5 then i will get 12 so that is the mean of this group so similarly i calculated mean of each group then what i did is i calculated average of all the ranges which is r bar similarly i calculated average of all these means which is nothing but x bar now there is another chart which is very important to consider this chart calls d2 okay this is a constant which we require to calculate standard deviation it depends upon the number of uh, elements or number of uh, measurements in each group for example in this each group has five measurements so that means n is equal to five so we have to search for this number here in this chart and we have to see equivalent d2 number in this case we have five as a sample group so for 5 the value of d2 is 2.326 okay now once we have these numbers let's put these numbers together uh, we have x bar is equal to 11.6 r bar is equal to 3 d2 is equal to 2.326 and i already explained you how to uh, see that d2 in the table okay now let's go for the calculation part of it so in calculation first thing we'll calculate is standard deviation so what is standard deviation this was theoretical but in reality we are going to get curve something like this so this curve will have a mean shift so in this example itself we have mean as 11.6 so that means the mean itself is shifted towards left correct so the graph 
also will have a different spread okay compared to this one it depends totally upon variation okay the range the more the range is the more the spread will be okay so this is the actual graph which is different than a theoretical graph standard deviation is represented by r bar divided by d2 d2 is constant we already have seen that so r bar plays very important role what is the r bar r bar is range okay in which our variation is happening the more the range okay higher the standard deviation and more the range means lot of parts can go out of spec so we want smaller uh, range that means we want smaller standard deviation now let's understand what is cp which is process capability okay so process capability is equal to upper specification limit minus lower specification limit so we have already known this okay these are given by design we have not calculated them okay divided by six sigma and we know what sigma means sigma totally depends upon range okay it's very important to understand if you want to control cp what is the most important factor range obviously and if you want to control the range what is the most important factor you know controlling the variation in the process if there is less variation in the process range will be minimum and that's how your cp will be higher the higher the cp better it is for your process that means lesser parts will be rejected in your process so we need higher cp right now let's calculate cpk cpk we have to calculate for upper specification limit as well as lower specification limit and the minimum of them will be our real cpk now why we have to do that let's understand cpk for upper specification limit is equal to upper specification limit which is this one okay minus x bar which is this one which is actual x bar so we want to see how far you know this x bar is from these limits why we want that the if it is near then we are in trouble right you understand so we want the bigger difference if we want this difference to be bigger that means we want higher cpk you understand it if it is near then we are in problem because then this curve will go outside of the specification limit that means more parts will be rejected you understand that that's why we want this to be as away as possible from upper specification limit or lower specification limit for that uh, sense in order to control cpk you have to focus on mean shift okay so you have to make sure that your parts actual parts are as close to the mean as possible that's what we have to control if you don't control that then your cpk value will go down okay the more the distance uh, between mean and x bar cpk will be lower you understand why it is lower because more this distance means it is going to go closer towards one of the limits lower specification limit or higher specification limit closer to this means your cpk will be lower so we want to have this shift minimum as possible let's calculate the same thing for lower specification limit so x bar minus lower specification limit divided by three sigma what we are doing here basically is we are saying actual mean is closer to lower specification limit or upper specification limit we want to take the value which is closer because that's where the parts may go out right that's where the parts may go out and that's why we have to take minimum value correct and the minimum value will represent whether our parts are safe or not so minimum of these two like 0 0.62 and 0 0.41 0 0.41 is minimum that's why cpk lower specification limit is our cpk value now how to control this as i already explained if you want to control cp you have to control range okay you have to control range because uh, we have to control sigma and for that you have to control range similarly if you want to control cpk you have to control x bar so we have to ensure that this x bar calculated mean is as near to theoretical mean and your cp and cpk should be more than 1.33 so you can see here we are we were talking about plus minus 3 sigma okay so which is total 6 sigma 
विच कवर्स नाइनटी नाइन पॉपुलेशन ओके वट अबाउट टोटल ट्वेल्व सिग्मा विच इज प्लस माइनस सिक्स सिग्मा प्रोसेस वी आर गोइंग टू कवर नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम नाइन एट परसेंट पॉपुलेशन इन दिस ओके विच इज मोर स्ट्रिंजेंट दैन यूर प्लस माइनस थ्री सिग्मा प्रोसेस सो होपफुली यू अंडरस्टैंड सी पी सी पी के एनालिसिस एंड इट्स सिग्निफिकेंस इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन राइट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स एंड प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब टू द यूट्यूब चैनल